Uh, I'm going to give you a brief history of how EFT came to be. In 1979, Roger Callahan, a clinical psychologist, introduced, introduced thought field therapy. TFT posits that when a per person thinks about emotionally troubling or traumatic experiences, they are activating a thought field. Callahan theorizes that the information becomes energetically encoded in the thought field, called a perturbation, it's kind of like in a computer when things get coded in, um, which causes an obstruction in the energy flow, leaving the system blocked and vulnerable to traumatic re-triggering. Callahan's method employs the meridian tapping, which is usually self-administered, which is the tapping on the points, um, at specified points on the body to unblock and realign the flow of energy, leading to a cracking of the code and relief from the trauma. Callahan's method gives a specific prescription for each individual person and problem. Thus, one would be assigned a precise sequence for the order and the locations on which to tap while thinking of the troubling issue. So you've got to be in the thought field as you're tapping. This prescriptive approach, focusing on the mechanics of the tapping, is the central agent of change in TFT. So if person A and person B would go in and your, your problems are different and he'd be doing muscle testing and doing, you know, you might get a whole different set of points to tap mm -hmm. than you. You know, it's, so you get a specific order and prescription. And the taps, Callahan used taps. There's meridian points all over the body. I have had two great loves in my life as a clinician, psychoanalysis and EMDR. Others have tried to capture my heart and even want a piece of it, leaving their mark on it. But until EFT came along, the first two remained my go-to guides. When EFT and I were introduced at least nine years ago, I was, I was initially unimpressed. Um, it was demonstrated in what's, and I find I've talked to a lot of people, they go, yeah, I've seen it, I don't think so much, you know, and that's kind of how I, it's nice, it's interesting, but, you know, didn't really do much for me. That was kind of my feeling. It was demonstrated in what seemed to me to be a simplistic and magical fashion, just tapping on points and repeating the troubling emotion like this. Um, this is what, anxious, 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 you know, just going around. And um, so between that and the counting, singing, eye movements, it ended up feeling like 87 steps to remember. And after all that work, I didn't experience much of anything. And I'm only speaking for myself here. Additionally, when I tried to teach it to people, they either remained unengaged or were too confused by all the actions required. So I stored it up on a high shelf in my closet and forgot about it. In the winter of 2011, I stumbled upon an online event called the World Tapping Summit. And just to amuse myself, registered for the 22 free lectures given online by an array of master tapping clinicians. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be dumb, but I'll do it. It's free. Um, <laughs> this exposed me to far more information about EFT and let me observe its application in deeper and more sophisticated ways. Uh, it also gave me an in vivo experience of the model's efficacy as I began to sense a lightening and shifting of areas inside of me that, have, that had felt previously stuck. Dare I speak for most of us in saying it is often what has contributed to our own emancipation that steers our clinical preferences. Amongst the various lecturers, I found myself drawn to Dr. Carol Look, a protege of Gary Craig's, who has gone on to develop and teach EFT with her own unique flair. I've been in a mentoring group with her since 2011, so my practice of EFT has been largely informed by that work, as well as been flavored by my strong roots in psychoanalysis, extensive experience with the MDR, and individual sensibilities. I note this as there are a number of ways EFT is practiced, much as we had in the EMDR world with standard and modified protocol and the, psychoanalytic one, and the psychoanalytic one with its multiple theoretical perspectives, okay? Uh, I will be 
So, you know, you're going to get kind of one style of it from me. So these are the meridian points that are used in, in the model I use. It starts on, and you can all do this, um, this is called the karate chop point. It's the fleshy point on just where a karate master would hit a brick, okay? This is called the karate chop point, and this is where we do something called the setup phrase. The setup phrase is like your GPS. Um, you will set up the problem, you know, you will, say, and we'll be doing this all together. You might say, well, even though I felt anxious when my landlord called me yesterday and yelled at me, and it made me feel like a little girl, um, I deeply and completely accept myself and all my feelings. So you set up the problem, you try to be as specific as you can be, and then you add a positive phrase at the end. Now, a lot of people have a problem with saying, I love and accept myself, or whatever. Um, you have to stipulate, you're not saying, I accept the feeling like I want to keep the feeling. You're saying, I accept it because it's here. You know? So, it's, it's, because very often when we're feeling things we don't want to be feeling, we are also subtly or not so subtly kicking or criticizing. So, it dismantles the inner critic. If that feels too incongruent to say, you can say all sorts of different things. And we can, I can go over that later. You can say, well, I give myself credit for at least trying this silly tap. You know, you just say something positive. You set that up three times. Okay? And then you go around to the points, and we'll do this later. I'm just going to show you the points right now. First point is right at the beginning of your eyebrow, right, right where the hair starts, okay? You just do light little tapping there. Second point, you follow the bone around, and it's on the bone at the outside of the eye. Okay, not on your temple. It's right on that little C curve of the bone right there, okay? Uh, underneath the eye, right under your eye, on the bone again. Right? If you drew a line down from your pupil, it's right under the orbit there. On uh, and you're not under your nose. Little crease of your chin. Collarbone point is right below the collarbone on one side. There are different ways to do it. There's usually a little knob here in the middle. Everybody got a knob? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me I don't have a knob. <laughs> well, where you know, and you move about half an inch below that where it's a little bit soft. Okay, it's right there. Okay? You can also just make a fist and do that whole area if you want, and you'll hit it. Um, under the arm, about hands width down, right there, about four inches below. Okay? Uh, top of the head, you can either go in a little teeny circle, or I like just to make a little claw with my hands right on the top, not too far back, you want to be right in the middle. And then usually I give it a little breath at the top, and then go around again. Okay? So we'll do that later, but those are the basic, nice consolidated points. They're all above the heart. We do have other points. It's not that the other points are bad points, but these are very doable points. Yes? Um, but what I'd like to do, because we can all tap along, there's something called borrowed benefits with EFT. Let's say you go home and you get into this and you're doing the tap-alongs on some of the sites. And even if it isn't your issue, um, a lot of issues. A lot of issues have general overlying similarities, right? A lot of us have anxieties. We might not have that situation, but sometimes when you tap along, even though it's not your problem, you can get some of the benefits from it. So we're going to tap along as I do this dialogue, okay? And you're going. Let's see how this works. If it gets too confusing. Um, I'm going to be the lead voice because there's always an echo when you're doing it in a dyad. One person says something and the other person repeats it. Sometimes you're leading, sometimes the other person's leading. I said, I give myself credit for facing these feelings. I give myself credit for facing these feelings. Uh, collarbone. It feels relieving to cry. And I'm not afraid this person. I'm not afraid she will correct me if this isn't resonant for her, okay? Because I always tell people if I'm saying something that feels too, a, a, you know, not right, you let me know. Um, maybe I can handle it. Maybe I can handle it. And I go, I pendulate a little bit, so I go, no, I don't think I can handle it. If it's too new, I always do a little bit of pendulation to get it out. Um, uh, oh, sorry. At least not yet. At least not yet. But 
I might be able to work on this. <laughs> and maybe someday be able to handle it. Maybe someday. Take a deep breath. Let it go. 